Hello doctors, myself Dr. Salman and as you know I'm a faculty of microbiology at MIST. So today it's going to be a small contribution from my side towards this recall of the questions which was in fact sent to me from within you. So I'm thankful for all those doctors who have helped me compile these questions. Okay, and if there is something that I might have missed out in this, please do help me, you know, to add on to those questions as well. Okay, if you recall any options that were given in any question, you can also uh, help me with that. Obviously, the wording of the questions will not be the same as you might have seen in your exam, but we know the context of it, like what was given and what could have been the most probable answer for that. So I'll be discussing that with you shortly here. The first question I'm going to discuss here, it's related to mucormycosis. Now, let me tell you, doctors, if you all may recall, there were two questions on mucormycosis. And I had emphasized enough just before exam that this is a very hot topic and you should definitely prepare. In fact, we had a session on this where I told you, right, these images may show up, make sure you know them. Luckily speaking, they actually came in the exam. So one of the questions was in the form of a clinical vignette. Okay, I don't know if it was in part one or part two. And then the second question was this image that was given, right, related to the aseptate hyphae that we have discussed. Okay, so again, that might have been asked in the other part. Okay, so two questions total of mucormycosis. All right, so hopefully you guys got it correct. Second question was related to this image right here, right? Um, if you remember, aspergillus, we have learned, it has septate hyphae. Septate means, you know, this demarcations that would be seen. And the branching of aspergillus is at 45 degrees, right? Whereas I told you, the mucormycosis, they have a ribbon-like hyphae, and they branch at obtuse angles or right angles. And guys, they're described as ribbon-like hyphae. All right, so that was the appearance that was given. A patient presents with fever, headache, nuchal rigidity. We can stop right there. Nuchal rigidity hints you towards meningitis case. Right, doctors? Now, there are many causative agents of meningitis, as you know. So we need to know which one is that. You know, they have to give you some kind of a hint. Okay, the image was not solely given like this. They have, in fact, given what is there in the image. Like, uh, I believe this was given as such. CSF examination shows that the organisms were gram-negative diplococci. Right, doctors? See, first of all, gram-negative means pink in color. Okay? Do you remember from our class? In fact, I used to write the gram-positives with purple color, gram-negative with this pink. So if you see now, gram-negatives are pink. Cocci means the most important Neisseria I had told you back then itself. Okay, so this is it. Neisseria has two species, either gonorrhea or meningitis. So who causes meningitis from that? Neisseria meningitis. All right, guys. So that would be the answer for this. See, technically, the other agents can also cause meningitis, but the description has to change. For example, strep pneumo and staph aureus are gram-positive cocci, Haemophilus influenzae. These guys are gram-negative bacilli. Right, doctors? So that would have been the answer if those kind of hints were given. All right. So hopefully you guys also mark this one correct. All right. Let's move to the next question. A patient who is a HIV positive patient presents with diarrhea. And what is the most common causative agent for this diarrhea? Right, doctors? See, HIV patient, when they get infections, it's not from the agents who commonly cause certain diseases. It is generally by some, you know, not so common organisms. So see here, the answer to this is Cryptosporidium pavum. I believe an image was also given along with this. Okay. And what does this image tells us? These are nothing but the cysts of these organisms, right? We had not only learned Cryptosporidium as the causative agent for diarrhea. Of course, it's the most common, but there are other agents also. If you have a look at this, this is from our class discussion. We have learned Cryptosporidium, Cyclospora, and Isospora. I told you Cryptosporidium has very small, you know, sized uh, cysts, whereas Isospora, they are elongated and they're, you know, comparatively bigger. And you can also see the cyst of Cyclospora. What was special about all these things? They were all acid fast. That's why they're appearing pink in color, 
right? If you see, I had highlighted that point as well, modified acid fast staining, it is used for this oocysts, all right? Next question, identify this organism causing the diarrhea, okay? So guys, first of all, you have to see the image and identify something here, right? I told you this human looking like image, you know, with the eyes, mouth, etc. This is nothing but a trophozoite of Giardia lamblia, described as tennis racket shaped, etc. Remember, we talked about the falling leaf motility, etc. Okay. And I had in fact posted how the motility of this looks in the Miss Next group on the telegram. Next, identify the parasite causing malaria. Now, this thing, guys, from what again the students have told me after the exam, they've said RBC was given along with, you know, some rings inside it. Okay. Now, please look at the discussions we had in the class and you can answer this probably. Okay. Multiple rings were given. I told you multiple rings within the RBC is a classical feature of falciparum. Whereas if you see a single large ring, it is a feature of Vivax, right? Since multiple rings were given, our answer here would be falciparum. In fact, guys, I had given you this exact image in the mock test also just before your exam, right? So this time, I believe we got lucky and there were a lot of questions which were asked. So the next question here, doctors, it was related to Madurai foot, that is mycetoma. Image of mycetoma was given, you know, with the draining pus, etc. So you have to identify it as mycetoma and then they gave, you know, the options in which the causative organism was mentioned. So I don't know what options were actually given to you, but guys, there is one hint that I had given you, right? When we were discussing this topic, I told you, right? Most of these organisms may contain Madure in their name, Madurai foot, right? So they are going to contain this Madure in their name. So what do you see? The uh, Madurai foot or mycetoma is of two types, actinomycotic mycetoma, which is the bacterial one, and the eumycotic, that is the fungal. So if you see the agents are mentioned and I highlighted the Madure word back then itself. And then I told you on examination, we look at the color of the granules to figure out whether the cause of this mycetoma is eumycotic or actinomycotic. All right. Which of the following antibodies is a pentama? Now, again, there is a discrepancy in this question because most of the students have told me they got pentama in the examination, whereas some students have also told me they got a dimer. Okay. First of all, I hope you all remember, there were only two antibodies. In fact, we have discussed them. The very first points were these only. If you look at the IgM antibody, what is the first point written there? Pentama. I've told you five antibodies will exist as a one single unit and they're all joined by J chain, joining chain. And because five antibodies exist as a single unit, I told you it has the highest molecular weight. So we have related certain points with this, right? Next, if you look at the IgA also, we have talked about the dimer in this. That means two antibodies exist as one single unit. So whatever the question was in your exam, again, guys, I don't know if they will give you two separate questions, like some people getting IgM, some people getting IgA uh, picture or the word pentamer dimer, but whatever it was, hopefully you guys got it correct. Okay. A five-year-old child presents with fever, bull's neck, as shown in the image, identify the disease. Catchy words, right? So this bull's neck appearance, I have told you it is seen in diphtheria. So you can see when we are discussing clinical presentation, I had made you right. Bull's neck appearance or edema is a feature of diphtheria. Then we had discussed the diagnosis. Okay. Now, even the diagnosis questions, you know, the granules or the agars, etc., have been asked in the previous exams. I've always told you diphtheria is a very solid topic, you know, when it comes to asking questions. So make sure you know about this. Next question, genital lesion with a beefy red ulcer, right? If this word was used, there's no other option except for donovanosis, right? So, you know, Klebsiella granulomatis was formerly known as Calimatobacterium granulomatis. It's the causative agent of a disease called as granuloma inguinale or granuloma venerum venereal diseases, right? Also called as donovanosis. We have talked about the clinical presentation being the beefy red ulcer and something called as donovan bodies, right? In which these guys have that bipolar appearance or safety pin appearance. Next, the other question here, they have given you an image, right? And they've asked, what is this organism? 
So guys, this is a very easy question. Of course, generally speaking, the structures of viruses, there are a few organisms which were always important. And this guy has always been there in the important list, right? So HIV virus. See for yourself. What did we discuss in the class, which is the most common HIV found in India? Then we studied the structure of this virus. It contains things like glycoprotein 120, GP41, etc. The roots of infections. Then if you look at this image, what I've drawn, you know, of course, it's not the same, but you get an idea, right? This is how the virus looks like. And these structures were mentioned like GP12041. So hopefully you guys could easily pick out that they're talking about HIV virus. Okay. So again, this would be the answer for this HIV. Next question, a five-year-old child presents with fever, respiratory distress, inspiratory strider. The thumbprint sign is noted on radiography. What is the most common agent causing the problem? So guys, understand something. The first two lines, I'm sure you have learned in the ENT as well, that it's a diagnosis of acute epiglottitis. If you see the question, they have asked you, what is the most common agent causing this problem? So guys, we have learned in the class itself. And in fact, I told you there is a controversy going on in relation to this. But according to all the latest journals and all, it is said that, okay, hemophilus influenza is not as common cause anymore and the streptococci has taken over this. That means the most common agent in relation to this is streptococcus pneumoniae. In fact, I clearly mentioned this to you and I asked you to answer this if it comes in the exam. All right, so we would go with streptococcus pneumonia on this. Orchitis is an important complication of which infection? Now, if you see doctors, this time we have gotten really lucky. The God has been really kind to us. So if you see mumps, you know, in the first two, three lines, how happy we would get if a question comes from that topic, right? So mumps, we have learned it's the most common presentation generally is the parotitis, right? Inflammation of the parotid glands. And the other things, what we can see is orchitis, ophoritis, etc. So the question came, orchitis is in complication of, answer would be mumps. Next, a lady got stung by a bee, after which she develops a shock, okay? Just these words, like, you know, getting a bite and then developing a shock-like thing, you all understand they're telling you about a hypersensitivity. You know, the type 1 hypersensitivities are due to the insect bites, etc. So, guys, now they're asking you, what is the substance that is most importantly related to the patient's presentation? This is what we have discussed when we were talking about the topic of hypersensitivity, more precisely type 1 hypersensitivity, right? So I told you IgE antibody is involved in the type 1 hypersensitivity. When it binds to the mast cells, the mast cells degranulate, releasing histamine. And that histamine is responsible for vasodilation and bronchoconstriction. In fact, these are the symptoms that you will be seeing in the shock also, right? So this time, the histamine is your enemy in this type of hypersensitivity. That's why the treatment for this is nothing but antihistaminics. And if it's a full-blown systemic involvement, we would go for, you know, adrenaline. Now, a pregnant woman got bitten by a rabbit dog. What is the management? This thing we had discussed earlier, that if somebody comes with a dog bite, obviously there is a you know, categories for treatment also category one, category two, category three. But generally, the bite is the important thing. So that's what I had discussed with you earlier, right? So if somebody comes to you with a bite from, you know, a rabbit dog, a couple of things need to be done. You know, one thing is the local treatment. As you see there, the local treatment is nothing but washing the wound with soap and water, etc. Okay, clean the wound properly. Passive immunity, you all know, is giving the antibodies directly and they're called as HRIG, human rabies immunoglobulin. And then active immunity is nothing but giving the vaccines, right? So that is the idea. So all these three things are given when a patient comes to you with a bite. So that's what they mentioned in the question. It was a bite from a rabbit dog. Then if all the three were mentioned, we would go with all the three. If two were mentioned like vaccine plus immunoglobulin, we would go with that option. But that means vaccine as well as immunoglobulin has to be given in this scenario. All right, next. Which of the following diseases has vaccine zero conversion time that is shorter than its incubation period? Okay, now these were the options that were again sent to me. Uh, in fact, they said they clearly remember these were the options. All right, so this question, the answer is again rabies. 
Why? Because doctors, you know the rabies virus, there are two varieties, one called as the street virus, one called as the fixed virus. And rabies is a very fatal infection. You know, it causes encephalitis and it may kill the patients, right? So what you need to do is before the organism reaches the brain, you have to make antibodies within yourself so that, you know, you can tackle this virus. Okay. So the vaccine that is produced, it is from this virus called as the fixed virus, which has a shorter incubation period that is four to five days when compared to the street virus, which causes the natural disease. Okay. So how much is the incubation period? It is variable. It all depends on where did you get the bite on the body. It depends on the site of the bite. For example, if you get a bite on your feet, because the feet are very distant from the brain, incubation period of the disease is very long. If you get a bite which is nearer to the brain, let's say your face, that means the incubation period of the disease would be shorter. All right. So that is the idea here. See, if you take this fixed strain organism inside you, that means the antibodies would be formed much faster because the incubation period of this disease is shorter. Okay. From the options, what were given to me, I would have chosen the rabies for this. The most common viral agent causing, you know, respiratory tract infection in less than one year. I don't know if pneumonia was mentioned or not. Okay. Or the respiratory tract infection was mentioned. We would go with this guy called as RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. Okay. Respiratory syncytial virus. Okay. In fact, we have learned here, it causes the RTIs, respiratory tract infections in less than one year of age. Okay. Next, which of the following doesn't form a membrane? Of course, it's not a direct question as such. Okay. But you know, you all might have studied this condition called as Ludwig's angina. Okay. It's not related to the heart or anything as such. But please remember this infection, Ludwig's angina is related to the floor of our mouth, below our tongue mostly, right? So the idea is it's not related to tonsils, etc. I guess the tonsil word was also mentioned in the question, membrane over the tonsillar area. So the other infections can do that. You could have ruled this out and marked Ludwig's angina. Okay. Now, I don't know the full question again. Uh, maybe some worker working in a factory was mentioned or not, you know, but the question finally was association with the hepatocellular carcinoma. Okay. So we have learned something by the name of aflatoxin that is produced by aspergillus flavus. And this aflatoxin is related to hepatocellular carcinoma. So guys, if you see again, our notes, what I have done was I had highlighted the first four letters of the organism, A flavus, which gives you the word afla. And we have remembered the aflatoxin from that. Okay. So that was related to hepatocellular carcinoma. Next, a question was given on RT-PCR also. So technically it's one of the NATs, right? Nucleic acid amplification tests. Guys, real-time RT-PCR is not the only NAT. You know that we have talked about other things like true NAT, CB NAT, etc. But there was one difference I told you when it comes to the genes that you can detect in them, they're different. Okay. I told you when it comes to the other NADs, we will be detecting the E gene. And in fact, it's taken as a screening gene. And then the next one, the test would be confirmed by the second step. That is nothing but RDRP, confirmatory test. So E gene test is the first step. Second test is the RDRP test. So those are the only two things that you'll be detecting in there. But when it comes to the RT-PCR, real-time RT-PCR, I've told you various components of this virus can be detected. Okay. In the exam, I believe the N gene was given. So N gene cannot be detected by other NATs, but it can be detected by real-time RT-PCR. So the answer to this question would have been RT-PCR, not the CB NAT or true NAT or whatever was given in the options. Okay. So these are all the things, open reading frame, you all know, ORF1A, RDRP, RNA dependent, RNA polymerase, etc. what we talked about. Okay. Again, this is a screenshot from the notes what I had sent you in relation to the COVID topic. Next guys, safety pin appearance is seen in. Okay. Again, for this also, I have been getting like various options. I don't know what exactly was asked, but safety pin appearance word was given. I don't know if image was there or not. So we have learned about this bipolar stain or safety pin appearance. Okay. From what I could gather from many students, they have told me that Yersinia pestis was in the option. So they have marked that. And in fact, that is the correct answer if that is the case. All right. We have learned 
on vision stain, right? Safety pin appearance or bipolar appearance is seen. Okay. So that is about it. I, I hope you all understand. It's not the only organism though that has bipolar stain. There are others also. All right. But since the options were mentioned to me and from the options, I would say this would be the answer. Okay. A question came something like this. Again, a very vague thing that was told to me, like, you know, they didn't give me the full question. Lesion in a child's hand with the first discharge. Okay. The response responsible agent is all right so please fill me up with this help me out in case anybody remembers this question all right so please let us know uh, what were the options what was the exact question if you can remember all right thanks in advance this question came the agent of the disease shown in the image is not found in which of the body fluids okay some body fluids were given in the options so first of all your job is to identify what is the problem here. okay just by looking at the picture within a second i'm sure you all said this is elephantiasis or filariasis which is caused by you know vocaria bancrofti or brugia malai right these are the agents that can cause this of course i'm being very honest here we didn't discuss this specifically like in which fluid it will not be found you know and i don't think uh you know, as such, it is discussed. So from the most probable, what we can guess from this, the answer would be saliva. Okay. Saliva is the place where we, you know, wouldn't see these agents. Next, there was a question in relation to Shigella versus cholera. Okay. From what I could gather, they informed me that they gave a clinical scenario kind of a thing. I believe like there was a case that was presented to a doctor and it was a diarrhea case and between shigella versus cholera the doctor you know diagnosed it as shigella so what makes you know this doctor diagnosed it as shigella over cholera so you know there were certain differences that we have discussed like shigella it's a bloody diarrhea whereas cholera is a rice watery stool right so shigella is an inflammatory diarrhea Cholera is a non-inflammatory diarrhea. I told you the infectious doses are different. One has a low infectious dose. One has a high infectious dose. Complications like hemolytic uremic syndrome, hemorrhagic colitis, etc. are present with Shigella. They're not there with cholera. If they give you culture media, TCBS is for cholera. Whereas there are a lot of culture media for Shigella, what we have learned. So I don't know exactly what was given in the options, but hopefully you guys marked it correct as well. Okay. So there was another question based on this as well. Okay. Last question. It was on a mosquito. Again, there is a lot of discrepancy, whether it was Anopheles, Culex, because different people are having different opinion on this. Um, whatever it is, what was the exact question? Did they ask you just the vector or did they ask you in relation to any disease, etc.? So whatever it was, your first thing was to identify what is this mosquito, then probably related to some disease if they have asked you that. If they have mentioned some name of a disease, then probably you will remember by the mnemonic. I have given you in the class to remember which mosquitoes cause which diseases, right guys? So these things, pictures and all you learn in the SPM. So probably you might have identified it correctly and answered this question correctly. So this would be it, uh, doctors. And uh, I wish all of you the very best from you know, the bottom of my heart. And I pray that you guys clear this exam in this very attempt and, you know, get through the journey. My well wishes are with you. Please help me out with any remaining questions in case I missed out on any. Thank you very much. That's it from me.